So, uh, hello everyone. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So, today we will be doing a bit of uh, coding once again. Uh, last time you saw me, I was on Windows and I was explaining... Uh, what was that? I don't really know what it was. Uh, let me go ahead and have a look. Uh, last time we talked, or we spoke actually, it was three weeks ago, or... Oh, sorry one month ago and we were discussing loops uh, now a few people reached out to me in my DMs saying that I'm a bad programmer um, the reason why you may think that is I'm trying to explain it as, uh, as easily as possible and it just so happens that I'm explaining it in a way that it makes me sound more stupid so I'm really sorry if I offended some of you I will try and do my best <laughs> this time around so this is actually episode 4, um, and we're discussing a race this time around. Um, so, uh, let's discuss a race. So, what actually are a race? So I have a few notes here prepared. Um, so, arrays are essentially um, a sort of like boxes in which you can store uh, multiple va uh, variables of the same type. Essentially, can think of it as a box which has for example numbers in it and you can store multiple numbers in just one place um, a really uh, cool thing about arrays is you can in fact have multiple values in one place so you can actually call just one uh, variable and you'll have multiple uh, values that you can call which is really neat there are actually uh, you can read this if you want um, I'm not gonna explain everything um, I'm going to explain it as much as possible so you can start using arrays in your programming careers. So the the basic one is a uh, is a single dimensional array, which is just like that. It doesn't have any values associated with it so far. Um, one really neat thing of having a single dimensional array: you can declare a set of values in it which uh, really is like neato. <laughs> so uh, let's first start with just showing you a bit of code and hopefully I won't deter some of you. So let's go back to our editor. I have a terminal open but I haven't gotten to the folder where all my code is. So let me just get there. I believe it was the code folder. <laughs> uh, code folder, there we go. Let me list it out, okay good. And let's do mono dash, uh, I think it was uh, MCS, I think. And then it was, okay. Okay, I do not know which one it was. So one thing we can do, in fact, is go look at my repository. I have written it down there. So we're going to just find uh, made easy and we will find this one repository I have, uh, which will be updated. And here I have steps on compiling code. CSC it was, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended some of you. <laughs> Uh, you are probably screaming at your keyboards right now and it's been compiled and as you can see we have another text file here I'm sorry if it's a bit dark um, I will switch up the text soon enough hopefully so we have created our sample file but if we decide to run it it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything it's just a blank file it's not gonna do anything so uh, what we have to do is declare the array now so uh, a method you can declare arrays is, as I mentioned, let's do the first one, the single dimensional array with a set of elements. Um, this this one that I'm highlighting, that's, that's what we'll be doing mainly. This is what you will come across most of the time. And arrays are simply one of the main methods of working with many variables at the same time, which is a really neat way and it doesn't even use up that much memory, which is what you obviously want. So we're going to do the uh, integer, the brackets, and then name it, and then use the new integer thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to write integer, square brackets, uh, let's call it r, like array, 
then uh, equals new uh, integer and then we do uh, just, uh, these squiggly brackets and we put in some values so for example let's do uh, one two three four five and six and this is our array defined right here i'm spacing those out because that's what i like doing again we can just check if i've read, written it out correctly it seems to be that way so that's our array defined so we have now a um seven volume array a single dimension is seven volume array and what we can do is we can actually uh, print out some of the volumes so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to write a uh, for loop uh, we're going to name it uh, we're going to give it the integer I don't know e which will be equal to zero and we need to make sure that e uh, is smaller or equal to one two three four five six so six and we have to do e plus plus so that it works out i'm going to move this bracket down here it's not necessary but it's what i like doing and what we will be doing is we'll be just doing uh, a console uh, dot um, right line because we'll be printing it out on separate lines and we do array and then the e in here i'm going to explain what it soon does as soon as it finishes and we're going to do console dot read key uh, there we go i'm going to explain what it all does real soon so we have our array defined let's compile it oh wait and let's run this and yes we ran out of uh, our array so we have to kind of tweak it so what we have to do is set this to five because i don't know how to count apparently so let's recompile it and run it and you can see now it works properly the reason why the error has shown up is that we went outside of our array which is what you may come across essentially what i did is i have a for loop which writes out every single item in this array and what i did previously with the six it's actually seven items because you have zero one two three four five six you have seven items not six items like we have we have seven we had seven items we have six so that one item that isn't in the array will throw that error because we went outside of our array just by changing this so we have the six items um because they come from zero to a number that we give it a method we could have solved this solved this is it wouldn't have worked actually if i tried to do it the way that you might have been thinking just put in a one and a six that should work it's not going to work let me show you it's not going to work we'll get the same error and you can see we do not even have all the numbers we are still going above our array which isn't what we want to do so let me just uh, return this to the original state it was again with zero and a six which should work so we're going to recompile it and rerun it as you can see it does the same thing so we need to change this to a five and now we have zero one two three four five six which is six items which seems to be okay and now if we run it you can see no errors are being thrown so this is a single dimensional array so let me just uh single uh why do i even write this you guys are not even gonna get it um, single dim dimensional dimensional single dimensional array um, uh, printing out the the values and waiting for input waiting for input there we go so that's comments editor code so this is a single dimensional array uh, there is an alternative way which is simpler you just do this it will work the same way it's just a bit less code but you know you do what you know best 
what we can do is we can have a uh, also a da, 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 a two dimensional or just a multi dimensional array which you can visualize like some kind of a block so we can do a multi dimensional array so uh, let me just copy all of this code because it's going to make it much easier actually no uh, let's actually comment all of this out and um, you'll be able to work with this you can uncomment certain things I'll have to space out the main comments with just four instead of two and the main code itself with just two which is fine it doesn't change how the code works um, I didn't even have to do this here I can just move this down slightly so we can have a bit more space to work with there we go so now we're going to define a multi-dimensional array. So the multi-dimensional arrays are really useful if you have, if you want to try and write out something in a uh, set array, for example, printing out a set of numbers, which have to be arranged in a certain way. You can define positions with it. I'm not going to go into positioning in a command line. That's a topic for another day. It's not that complicated, but I'm not going to explain how it works. I'm here only to explain the arrays th themselves. So essentially, what we can do with a multi-dimensional array, uh, also one more thing, this uh, jagged array thing, I have never used it, because I know those exist, but I haven't used those at all. So we're just going to cover the main ones that are used 99% of the time. I'm not saying that jagged arrays are not used, I'm just saying that I don't have as much experience with them or haven't really seen them in any... Uh, competitions or samples or uh, or practice uh, problems on the internet it's mostly just 2d like multi-dimensional and single dimensional arrays um, so what we can do is let's actually do the multi-dimensional array so the multi-dimensional array is essentially defined the same way as our single dimensional which we can copy from here. Let me just do that real quick. But the main difference is you put in a, co a column and uh, we're going to name it uh, MDR, like a multi-dimensional array. Here I'm going to do SDR, like single dimensional, which means I have to change it even here to make it work. So we have a multi-dimensional array, but this is not the final piece of code that you need. If you want to have a multi-dimensional array, you just have to separate out values into different brackets, which as you can see, they've defined this way. So we're going to define it the same way. I'm going to explain why we're doing this. So we're going to do here a b, then we do a and here, and we do the same thing here. And now we have our two-dimensional array defined. Let me space these out so you guys can see everything. So the uh, basically what we've done is we have a one dimension of values here and the second dimension of values here. It's essentially the same thing as here, but this is defined in a single dimension. So you have just these ones at the far back. If you're defining a multi-dimensional array, you have to separate each and every dimension into its own bracket. Um, you can have like a 20 dimensional array, which I don't know why you would want to do that. It seems kind of a waste of processing power if you're really trying to do something. Unless you're doing something with data science, then I would see why would you want to do this. But here we're just explaining the basics, so I'm not going to go into that much detail. So now we have our multi-dimensional array defined, but how are we going to call it? How are we going to use it to leverage its power? Well, we're going to copy the set of code right here that I made previously. Uh, also remove the comments to make it work. And we're going to call the multi-dimensional array, but what you're going to see happen is uh, if I, you might be thinking, okay, you just copied that, so it should work, right? Well, let me show you what happens if you do it this way. If you do it this way, it will scream. It will be like, hey, you have a wrong number. It's expecting two. So we have only one uh, portion declared. 
we have to have in our multidimensional array a bit more than that. So what we can do, we have to look at how it's being indicated. So we want to have a two by three array in order to make it work. So to make it work, we're going to change this one to one. And we're just going to define another. Also, let me just, yeah, let, let's just do that. So let's just um, do a, another for loop to make this easier for ourselves. And we're going to call this one uh, int, I don't know, j equals uh, zero. Here we're going to do that. Since we are dealing with three, uh, I'm going to explain why I write, write. Let me just write this real quick and I'll explain why I did it this way. Oh crap, I'm messing up. And we're going to do J plus plus. And let me just put this down and we can take this and take this code. We're going to put, put it over here to make it a bit easier. And we're defining ease, which is one or two. So we now have to add another bracket in, in, into here and use the J tag. All right, so I'm going to compile this and then explain. It didn't work. Now it works, so let's just try and launch it. I'm so sorry that you had to look at this. And uh, boom, that's our multidimensional array. I feel so stupid now. I thought I had it memorized properly, but I, it seems I didn't. Um, so essentially what the multidimensional array does is we have defined it in a way that we have um, this is the method I used before or tried various versions um, and the method that works, it works this way. So we have essentially two um, item boxes filled with three items each and it's going like um, if it, it if it picks a zero, if we define it as a zero here, it will go into the first set of brackets here and then go for item zero, which is one. If we do, if the E right here was number one, it will go over here into the, in the this set of values. And if this one is J, if this J goes to, I don't know, one, it will pick the second item because it comes from like zero, one and two. So if we have, I don't know, one and one, we would have printed out uh, number five. If we did zero and and zero, we would have picked number one. If we did one and two, we would have picked six. If we did um, zero and two, we would have picked three. And if we did zero and one, we had picked four. Uh, I hope this makes somewhat of s some kind of sense. Um, so that's single dimensional and multi-dimensional arrays. These are the most common types of arrays you will come across. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I figured I might just do this because it's simpler for me to do and easier to explain everything. So uh, I just realized that I have some that I'm not that good and uh, I have to keep my game up. So yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to stay safe and wash your hands.